Today, let's talk about medications that can help you not only lose weight, but more importantly, keep the weight off long-term. Like we explained in the Science of Obesity video, when you start to lose weight, your brain assumes you must be starving to death. The good news is that there, that there are some medications that can help prevent this starvation reflex from occurring. Now, you don't have to take notes because we have created detailed information handouts that will be available on the website. Now, it is important to remember that there is no magic drug that works perfectly for everyone. Sometimes we may not be able to offer you a certain medication because it is not appropriate for your condition, it interacts with your other medications, or has potential side effects that may cause issues for you. That is why we make recommendations based on each individual patient's unique circumstances. So with that in mind, let's go over the medication options available in Canada. The first medication we will talk about is called Sixenda. The generic name of this drug is liraglutide, and it is a GLP-1 receptor agonist. GLP-1 is a hormone that your gut produces, and this medication essentially turns up the volume on this hormone signaling. Liraglutide was originally developed to help people with diabetes regulate their blood sugar, but what it also does is slow down how quickly your stomach empties food after you eat so you're fuller faster with less food. It also tricks your hypothalamus, the area in the brain that regulates hunger and weight, into thinking that you're not starving to death from a famine, and there's no need to store energy as adipose tissue or fat. In addition, it also helps reduce cravings, so you not only lose weight, but you maintain it. In fact, clinical studies show that on average, patients on Saxenda lose about 8% of their body weight. Saxenda is a once daily injection that you inject into your abdomen or your thigh. We start you at a low dose and we increase up each week to allow your body to get used to the medication and this helps reduce the chance of having side effects. Because this is a gut hormone, so understandably, there are potential gastrointestinal side effects. And these include nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, burping, fullness, and abdominal pain. Less commonly, we see headache, fatigue, and dizziness. Now, I know it sounds like one of those commercials where they list a hundred things that could possibly go wrong, but the good news is, is that really only about one in three patients on this medication experience side effects initially. And in the vast majority of cases, these side effects are transient and they resolve after a few weeks. In addition, our clinic has a lot of experience in helping patients manage side effects and you'll be meeting with us regularly to ensure you are tolerating your medication and are also happy with it. In some cases, we may even back off on your dosing to give your body even more time to basically get used to the medication. We really take a customized individual approach to each patient's treatment, as opposed to a blanket approach. Now, understandably, some patients have concerns about using a medication with a needle, but not to worry. We will show you how the pen works and we can even walk you through your first injection. In fact, as you can see, the needle is teeny tiny compared to others you might have had in the past. The next medication we will discuss is called semaglutide. This is a sister drug to liraglutide, but semaglutide is taken once weekly as opposed to daily. Semaglutide is the generic name, and its trade names are Ozempic and Wegovy. Ozempic is the one milligram dose, and it is approved for diabetes management, while Wegovy is the 2.4 milligram weekly dose, which is approved by Health Canada for weight loss. The trouble is, as of June 2022, when this video was filmed, the Wegovy pen is not yet available in Canada. So often, we use Ozempic as a substitute, even if you do not have diabetes. 
This is often referred to as off-label use, but it is essentially the exact same medication as Wegovy, which is approved for weight loss, just in different packaging and marketing. The hope is that Wegovy will be on the shelves in our pharmacies locally sometime in 2023. So Maglutide is also a GLP-1 agonist. So it works the same way as Saxenda or Loraglutide, but it is much more effective. In fact, the majority of patients on Semaglutide lose 15% of their body weight, essentially double what we see in Saxenda. Even more amazing is that one in three patients on Semaglutide actually lose more than 20% of their body weight. And this approaches numbers we see with some bariatric surgery procedures. In addition, a lot of patients really like the convenience of a once weekly injection as opposed to a once daily injection. The side effects with Ozempic are similar to Saxenda, but sometimes we do split the dose, such as taking half on a Monday and half on a Thursday to reduce side effects. We use the same approach as Saxenda by starting at a low dose and increasing up slowly. But with Ozempic, we wait four weeks at each dose before we increase. Whether we are talking about Saxenda or Ozempic, it is really important to listen to fullness and hunger cues when taking these medications. It is important not to eat your standard portion sizes simply out of habit, or as many of us were taught, to clear our plate whether we are full or not. This will make you uncomfortably full. Most of my patients tell me they end up eating about half the portion sizes compared to before starting their medication. Reducing your portion sizes will not only help you lose weight, it will help prevent nausea or abdominal discomfort. In addition, avoiding high fat foods can also help with this. Because loraglutide and semaglutide also treat diabetes, we will often end up reducing or even eliminating other diabetes medications you might be on. And you can expect your hemoglobin A1C to improve on Saxenda or Ozempic. In addition, your risk of a cardiovascular event like a heart attack or a stroke is reduced by 15 to 20% on these medications. It is important to know that we avoid using Saxenda or Ozempic in patients with a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, and we have to use caution in patients with a history of pancreatitis. So now that we have covered the injectable medications, there are a couple of other medications in pill form that we also sometimes use. One of them is called Contrave. This is actually a combination of two drugs, Wellbutrin or Bupropion, which is an antidepressant, and Naltrexone, which is an opioid blocker. This combination is thought to work in the brain to decrease appetite and cravings. Clinical studies show that patients can lose between 5 to 10% of their body weight with Contrave, with an average of about 8% body weight loss. It is usually taken twice daily with food, and we start at a low dose and work our way up, much like Saxenda and Ozempic. We avoid using Contrave in patients with uncontrolled high blood pressure, seizures, and those taking narcotics or opioids, or MAOI medications. Possible side effects include nausea, constipation or diarrhea, headache, insomnia, anxiety, and dry mouth. It is best to avoid taking this medication with a high fat meal as this can affect absorption. I should mention that if your drug plan does not cover brand name Contrave, we can prescribe you the gener generic forms of both of the two medications. It is also important to note that as I mentioned, you cannot take Contrave with narcotics and many of our patients going for surgery will indeed require narcotics both intraoperatively and after their surgery, and that is an important consideration that we have to make when considering this medication for you. The next medication that we occasionally use is called 5 ants. This medication is actually not approved for weight loss in particular, but it is used for patients who suffer from binge eating disorder, so I will discuss it briefly. It is the only medication approved by Health Canada for binge eating disorder. And like many of the other medications we have discussed, 
Vyvanse was also initially developed for a different condition, and then we noticed additional be benefits for other disease processes. It was first prescribed for ADHD, which is in fact associated with binge eating disorder. We can send you screening questionnaires if you feel this might apply to you. Vyvanse is a stimulant, so it is usually taken in the morning to reduce insomnia. Other potential side effects include nausea, abdominal pain, constipation or diarrhea, dry mouth, anxiety, headache, increased heart rate or blood pressure, and dizziness. Like the other medications we have mentioned, we start at a low introductory dose and slowly titrate up to find a dose that works well for you without side effects. The last medication we will discuss is one more drug that is not approved for obesity, but can help patients who suffer from night eating syndrome. This is called topiramate or Topamax, and it is an anticonvulsant used to treat seizure disorders and migraines. Sometimes we swap it out for other migraine medications that can actually cause weight gain, like beta blockers. It is taken once daily in pill form, and again, we start at a low dose and titrate up. Most people tend to take it in the evening as it can also help us sleep. Side effects can include nausea, diarrhea, dizziness, fatigue, tingling, and difficulties concentrating. So having gone through the available medications in Canada, the great news is that clinical trials are underway and new medications are coming down the pipeline in the future, such as terzepatide, which you may have heard of, now, it is not yet available in Canada, but we will keep you posted as soon as it or any other medications are. Thanks for listening, and I hope this has been helpful.